So about 10 months ago, I made a video about how to hire an Amazon PPC specialist. It did pretty well. A lot of people ended up using it and thanking me. And I've got a lot of views considering the amount of subscribers we had back then. But since then, I've actually learned a lot about hiring. I want to give you guys the updated guide that we are actually using internally at AI Hello right now to find the best people. This new method is way faster, way more effective, and just way less work on my end. I'll take you guys through each step right now and do a few screen shares to show you how I do things in detail. Let's dive right in. OK, so step number one is actually finding candidates. Last time, I discussed creating posts on LinkedIn and then manually going through Sales Navigator or just regular LinkedIn search to find other Amazon agencies and then reach out to the people who work there. Now, I still do many of the same things, but I've just found a way to make it 10 times faster. And I'm doing more of a shotgun approach than a sniper approach for two reasons. Number one is just 10 times as fast. You just get way more people. And then number two, you can't really tell by someone's profile if they're good or not. So you might as well reach out to everyone. And also a bonus reason is that you could spend a ton of time researching someone than reaching out to them and they just don't reply. So it's just better to reach out to everyone and interview everyone rather than try to do your research on 10 people and get like two replies from them. Right now I'll open screen share and I'll show you guys specifically what we do. All right, so my first step is to always just start by going to LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn Sales Navigator. If you don't want to pay for Sales Navigator, that's also fine, but it's the best option. I'll just open Sales Navigator up over here and just give this a moment. Our thoughts. Right, here we go. And then you want to use this search bar to start filtering for leads. So you can just put anything. I just put Amazon. Right. And then you have a few filters that we're going to use. So the first thing is geography. Uh, I only hire in Pakistan and India. So I'm just going to start by putting that in. Right. So include Pakistan, include India. Right. If you guys hire from other countries, you can put these in too. Or you can just put entire regions like Asia, for example, and then exclude any countries you don't want to hire from. Right. And then right now we're filtering for people with the word Amazon on their profile who reside in Pakistan and India. So you have 530,000 people. Most of these are in Amazon ads. Like if you just look at these search results, most of them are in Amazon ads. But I want to refine it a bit more. So what you can do is you can say, like, I want connections of certain people. Right. So for me, for example, I'd use like an influencer that I respect, that I think people who are good at Amazon ads or in my target demographic for hiring would also be following. I just put those in. Right. And anyone who follows that person who's also in the locations that I'm trying to hire from uh, and also has Amazon in their profile will just show up in this list and I can start targeting these people. So I already have a search ready here. So I have a save a safe search. And over here, you guys can see that I use connections of David Zimmerman, who are in Asia, but not in Israel, China, or United Arab Emirates. I did this because I mostly wanted Pakistan and India, but I was also open to like the Philippines, uh, maybe some people in like Bangladesh or something like that. So I just have this filter on. And then I remove anyone who is C-suite because no one's going to you know, be the owner of an agency or like a PPC software and leave their company to come join us as an Amazon PPC specialist. I've removed owners and I've removed directors because I was looking for like an entry level role or not like necessarily entry, but like an individual contributor role. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I just had geography. I had Amazon over here and I had these seniority levels removed and I had people who followed or connected with David Zimmerman and I was left with around 700 people. Right. And this is step one. Those 700 people will be basically reaching out to almost blind. We don't necessarily want to go through their profiles because you're going to spend a bunch of time to go through all of these. You're going to end up excluding a bunch of people who are actually good, including people who aren't good. And then out of these 700, you're probably going to get 150, 200 replies. So it's not worth going through 700 profiles, deciding you're going to message like 400 of them and only getting 100 responses. You might as well just message everyone and interview them all, especially if you're not going to do the interviews yourself, which I'll talk about later in this video. Right? After this, we're going to load this into a LinkedIn Messenger, and I'll show you how this works. All right, so in my LinkedIn messaging software, uh, I personally use a software called HeyReach. It's pretty good. I recommend you guys use it. If you already have something set up, you can go with that too. It really doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, I'm just going to show you the basic steps that we're using and what it actually looks like once it's implemented. Right. So over here, I have uh, my lists. So this is actually a list that I hired from, the David Zimmerman list. So I already have this loaded in. But basically what you do is you just drop a link of the uh, search results that you have, right? And you can even save it as a search and add that list in. 
a yes get everyone in and then I went in and I set up a campaign. Just find the campaigns, go in here, right? We have this campaign set up. And then over here, you can just view campaign workflow. And I just had one in mail and we sent around 489 or 98 of those. And I just said, hi, first name. I'm the co-founder of AI Hello, one of the fastest growing PPC software companies right now. Uh, then I just said brackets were up 75% over the last two months alone. We're also an Amazon advanced partner and manage over 5,000 seller accounts. Uh, then I just said like I've built the world's best PPC team and only 0.5% of candidates are accepted. This is actually true. Like I'm not making anything up here. I just say this to get them excited out applying. And then I ask them if we can chat, right? And this is the first part of my workflow. I don't know specifically how many people replied to this, but we got like 200 candidates out of this. Maybe you got a bit more, maybe you got a bit less. A lot of these people knew me because of the content that I produce or like my LinkedIn posts and videos. And a lot of people responded because my message was strong. Like we're a fast growing company. I hire the best people. You know, I'm the co-founder. I'm reaching out myself. I don't have like an HR person reaching out. And that gets a lot of people to reply. So I had a few hundred applicants and this was pretty much step one. This is the initial batch of people that you're going to interview. And I had a lot of good people in this batch. Step two is to actually interview these people. And I'll take you through how I do that without actually getting on any calls and what questions I ask. Okay, so now that you have your candidates, it's time to actually do the interviews. Last time I made two mistakes with my interviews. Number one, I took them all myself, which was a huge waste of my time because a lot of people were just not good or would not show up and I'd end up wasting my entire day and messing up my calendar for these interviews. Number two, I just spent too much time asking them questions that I didn't necessarily need the answer for. This time I have a process where I can actually offload the initial interview to someone else and just give them the questions that they need to ask and let them know how to inform me who's going to make it to the second interview and who won't. And I pay them based on the actual outcome of these interviews. And then I just interview the candidates that are actually likely to show up. I have like 95% plus show up rates and are actually likely for me to hire them because they've been screened by someone else. And I have a summary of all of the answers that they gave. So I'll show you how to do this right now on a screen share. Let's dive right in. Okay, so over here, you can find my prep doc. I have four questions that I ask my interviewers to ask candidates. And I also have the tracker sheet that we used last time when we were hiring, and I'll show it to you right now. So over here, we have what are your biggest achievements so far? And I want all the details, and I don't want them to be PPC related because a lot of people will just give you case studies about how they lowered ACOS or lowered TACOS or increased sales by 15%. I'm not interested in hearing that. I just want real life successes. Like some of the people that I've hired, for example, have paid for their own private uni, have bought their own cars, have traveled Europe with money that they've made freelancing PPC at a young age, uh, have built their own agencies, have launched their own brands, have started selling on Amazon at 14 years old. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not interested in a case study or like a tiny achievement that isn't really that impressive. So this is the first and most important question. The second question is, how did you prepare for this interview? Good people do good prep work. So if someone went and they watched my YouTube videos, they read my blog, uh, they read my LinkedIn posts, they reached out to some of the people that work at my company before showing up to the interview, then that's a very good sign. If someone didn't even check my website or has no clue what we do, then that's a bad sign. And I generally won't work with this person, you know, for any reason, right? No matter how well the rest of the questions go, I just won't work with this person. The third thing is, how do you learn new things, right? You want someone who's listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, researching things, reading documentation, and so on. Someone who doesn't learn isn't passionate about what they do and won't get better over time. The number four, uh, you want to ask them about some examples from their life and from their work that suggest that they perform at a much higher than average level, right? And you just want someone who's like smarter than average, someone that did very well at their last company, someone that maybe launched like a project that did very well. You just want these things because success leaves clues. You're not going to hire someone who was average their entire life then have them be a crazy high performer. It could happen and there are stories like that, but you're just making a bad bet, right? If you're betting on horses in a race, you just pick the horse that had a good history of winning, right? Same as if you were betting on like a soccer match, you just bet on the player or the team that does very well every time. You wouldn't bet on a team that always did bet, right? So these are, these are the four questions that we're generally asking. Uh, I just give these to any person to ask on the call. They don't necessarily have to be a PPC specialist. If you have like an executive assistant or a chief of staff, give this to them. If not, just hire like a VA off of Fiverr who has a good internet connection, not necessarily off of Fiverr, off of any platform. 
that has a good internet connection and good English and can conduct an interview well, ask them to ask these questions and just take notes, then they can put them on a sheet for you, which I have open over here. Okay, so over here in this sheet, I have most of my main information. Uh, I didn't have the question summary included in this sheet because it's a summary sheet. Plus, I've worked with this guy several times, so I know that he picks the right people for me. But you can have the question or answer summary uh, for each of the four questions in this sheet if you want to evaluate the candidate yourself as well. But basically, what we're doing is just tracking, you know, who the interviewer I used was, the name of the candidate, the email of the candidate, whether or not they showed up, plus what I'm going to pay the interviewer. So the reason I have this here is because I use a success-based model. So basically, if they no-show, uh, I pay them a small amount, which is $5. If they show up and the interviewer asks them the questions and they just do bad, I pay the interviewer 20 bucks. And then if they're approved, I either pay the interviewer 50 bucks if I speak to the person and I like them, or if I speak to the person and I don't like them, I pay the interviewer nothing because the interviewer wasted my time by referring this person to me, right? This is a pretty good model. You basically do nothing uh, but speak to the approved people at the end. So over here, for example, this interviewer did 80 interviews for me. He approved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this was another round of interviews that we did. So I only had to do nine calls after. And of those nine calls, I rejected eight and I only paid for one, right? And I think my total fee for all of this was like a thousand bucks or something. So I paid a thousand bucks. I had like almost a hundred hours of work done and I get to speak to the nine best people immediately without me having to do any work. And of those nine best people, I found one person who was good and I ended up hiring that person. And that was it. You can have the call summaries uh, over here again for each of the questions. So you can make sure that they're not approving someone bad or just missing out on someone that could be good. And then that's it. You don't have to go through the 80 calls yourself. Once you're actually on the call with this person, you generally can ask them the same questions again to see how they answer live. And then I usually ask them to go through their life story. Uh, I didn't have this question in my last video, but generally I ask them to cover their entire life story for me. And I'm interested like from the second they were born to the minute that they're speaking to me. Uh, right now on this call. And generally, I want to know like um, like how they grew up, what they were like in school, what they wanted to work on when they were in school, you know, how smart they were back then, how hard they worked, uh, how they got into Amazon PPC, when the first time they made money was, because if someone started young, they're generally better, and so on. And if I find their story to be impressive, and I find examples of what I'm looking for in this candidate, I end up hiring that person. So I generally just ask the life story question, I asked the preparation question and the biggest successes question, which can actually be covered in the life story, right? That's it. After that's done, I know I'm going to hire this person or not hire this person. And that's it. So I did basically no work on the outreach. I just used software. And I also did pretty much no work on the actual interviews. 90% of the interviews were automatically rejected by my interviewer. I spoke to nine people. Each conversation was 15 to 30 minutes on average. I rejected eight of them and I got my person. So all in, maybe I put like six hours into getting this higher and I did a lot better uh, than I do on average when I had to do all of this stuff manually. All right, so that was my full process start to finish. I showed you guys how to find candidates, how to outsource the interviewing and what to do for the final interview. Once that's done, I usually also give them a case study and that's only for the people who do well on the second interview. If they do well, I just give them a case study to make sure that they're actually good and if they perform well on the case study and they put extra work in and I feel like they've actually come up with something special, I offer them a job at AI Hello. Otherwise, I just keep looking and I keep trying to interview more people. That's it. That's my entire process. I hope you guys found this useful. If you have any questions, as usual, just let me know in the comments or just reach out at safe at AI Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.